Hi, I'm Jacob from Warm. When we look at how much energy our homes use, it always comes down to three factors, which we call the energy equation. Those three factors are the house shell, the house systems, and the occupant behavior. Right now, let's take a look at the house shell. Imagine a home with a really bad house shell. Missing windows, poorly installed doors, and a hole in the roof. In the winter, a house like this would have the furnace burning gas 24 hours a day. The owner would have huge bills while still having a very uncomfortable home. If your house shell is in good condition, then your home holds its heat in the winter and keeps its cool in the summer. That air won't get all mixed up with the temperatures outside. This can improve the energy use in your house because your furnace and air conditioner don't have to work as hard. That means the bills stay lower and your home becomes more comfortable. As always, we want to prioritize where we put our energy saving efforts. First things first, seal up air leaks. It costs you a lot of money to heat or cool the air in your home. When you lose that air through a leak in your home's shell, it's like throwing money out the window. We want to trap as much of that air as we can, so you don't waste money. We do this by sealing the air leaks in your home. But first, we need to know where the air leaks are. So here's an easy test you can use. This is what we call the wet hand test. The basic idea is you take a sponge or a washcloth, and you get your hand wet. You do that because when the skin is wet, it's much more sensitive to airflow. You basically just turned your hand into a draft detection machine. And you can use this, moving it around a window or any other spot that you think might be leaking air, to pinpoint the exact source of the leak. And that way you don't spend time sealing up things that might not be leaking. So let's try it. I'm going to do this on a cold, windy day. I'll just move my hand around here. Don't feel anything so far. Oh, yep. Okay, right along the bottom here, I've got a draft. Now, we now have to look at what to do to seal that up. If it was leaking down around here, which you might find on a lot of new windows, even though the window itself is fine, if you've got a leak here, we could seal that up with just going to the hardware store, getting a common tube of caulk and a caulk gun. Squeeze the caulk up in along that, and we'd have that sealed up permanently. But we wouldn't want to use that regular caulk on a spot like this because it permanently seals it up and we want to be able to open this window again later. So for something like that, I'd use this. This is called rope caulk. And all I have to do is peel a string of it off and put it in with my hand. It's simple, easy to do, no real mess. and now it's sealed up. I could leave it that way forever. But if I want to open this window again in the spring, I can just peel it right back off and even use it again later. Now, a roll of rope caulk only costs about $2 at the hardware store, but it'll save you a lot more than that. It's easy and effective. It's also a good idea to check outlets and light switches on any wall that has the outdoors on the other side. If you've got a leak coming through there, it's pretty easy to fix. For about $1.50 at the hardware store, I picked up a pack of these socket sealers. About 12 of them in a pack. And it's just these little pieces of foam. They've got the holes already cut out to seal this up. So all we have to do is we take a screwdriver, or if you don't have a screwdriver, you could even use a butter knife. Now you said ideally, Turn off the circuit first so that you're not going to run into problems with the electricity. We just take this, put it on over that outlet, and then screw the plate back in place. Now it's sealed and won't let that air through. You also want to check doors that go to the outside or to an unheated space. These are pretty easy to fix up. 
can get a door sweep down at the bottom, close up that gap down there. And for the sides, you want to use some sort of weather stripping. Close up this gap here. Together, these would only cost about five or six dollars at your local hardware store, but they'll save you a lot more than that, and they'll help keep your home a lot more comfortable. It's also a good idea to check along baseboards, attic hatches, and anywhere else that might lead to the outside. Also check under sinks for holes around a plumbing pipe. Check the basement, especially around the top of the foundation. And check fireplace chimneys. So the first step in improving the house shell is to seal all those air leaks. But even once you do that, you can still lose a lot of heat through the walls and the ceiling. And that brings us to our next step, insulation. Adding insulation is almost like putting your house inside a thermos. If you're trying to keep the inside warm, it'll hold the warm longer. If you're trying to keep the inside cool, it'll hold the cool longer. And it'll use less energy while doing it. The place you want to start adding insulation is the attic. This will help hold your heat in, and adding insulation to the attic is easier than adding it to the walls. There are a variety of types of insulation you can use. Fiberglass bats, blown-in cellulose, sprayed-in foam, or rigid foam. Whatever type you use can work. The important thing is to make sure that you have an installer who knows what they're doing and will install the materials well, so that you know they're really going to work for you. Now insulation is measured with R value. The higher the R value, the better the insulation. This is a measure of how much heat moves through the insulation. In most homes, we'd recommend you want to start with at least R30 in the attic. And you may want to be considering R40 or even R50 depending on your climate. Whether you're doing the job yourself or hiring a contractor, it's important to make sure that the insulation is installed properly. For example, a lot of people use fiberglass bats because they're inexpensive, but if they're not installed properly, they're not going to provide the R value promised. See up here how the insulation is pulled away from the stud, leaving a cavity? Or down here where the insulation is compressed. It's all reducing the effectiveness of the insulation. This is a picture we took with a thermal imaging camera, which detects temperature changes. This image shows the room as we'd normally see it. This image shows the heat loss in that same room. These walls have insulation, but the gray areas show us where the insulation was installed badly and is still letting heat escape the house. For the walls, we can only work with the space that we've got, which will usually give us R13 or less. We'll often recommend a blown-in cellulose. This is made from fire retardant recycled newspaper, and it fills in the space within the wall very nicely. You can also use a spray-in foam. It makes an excellent insulation, but it's also more expensive. Those two steps, sealing air leaks and insulating the house, are the main components to improving the house shell. And when the house shell is in good shape, it'll hold your comfort in.